Hi, this is Chris and I am from Data Marketing for Everyone. Today I want to talk to you about how to run a market basket analysis. A market basket analysis is a technique that you can use to find a group of customers who are not buying a product that they should be buying and therefore you can give them a discount and get margin that you probably would never have already gotten. So a good example of running a market basket analysis would be if we were a shaving company and we sell cologne and shaving razors and blades and a number of other items. If I could figure out who are the customers that bought my razors but have yet to buy my replacement blades, I could take those customers and those customers alone and give them a discount on my blades. And I don't mind suffering margin by giving them a discount because if they haven't bought my blade replacements by now, I'm working under the assumption that they may never buy them. What I don't want to do is I don't want to include customers that are already buying my replacement blades because I don't really want to discount them because then I will suffer margin that I could gain. Remember, when you discount, every discount dollar comes off of your profit, right? Your cost of goods sold stay the same. So discounting to the wrong people can be a little dangerous. I'm going to do my market basket analysis using Microsoft Excel. And if you've watched my videos, you know, I'll use Excel to maybe 100,000 records, but maybe a million, two million records, I'd recommend Microsoft Access. If you have any questions on how to run a market basket analysis or how to use Microsoft Access for this, or any other questions you want me to take on offline, I can be reached at datamarketingforeveryone at gmail.com. Again, my name is Chris, and I hope this helps you out. Thanks. To do the market basket analysis, we will need transaction data. Um, and transaction data is going to come out in two different ways that we don't really want it to. One is it's going to come along with data that we might or might not need for this analysis. Um, it's normally going to come out with some customer information, uh, the quantity, the product, the, hopefully the customer code, because we do need this, and we do need a product ID. Purchase date, purchase time, all kinds of stuff, whether or not they paid with credit card. Um, but for the purposes of this analysis, we really only need a customer code and some sort of unique product identifier. In this case, because it's sample data, I just use a name. Um, this being sample data, I think there's 250, maybe 300 lines of data. If there were 200,000, 300,000 lines of data, I'd do it the exact same way if I were doing it in Excel. So the other nuance is Bob here, he shows up four times because he's had four orders for different products at different times. So what we want to arrive on is we want to arrive on a list that has one of every customer code, no duplicate customer codes, and some way to figure out if they bought a razor and they bought a razor blade. And we're going to do that with a pivot table. But first, we need to get rid of all the columns we don't need. I'm just going to delete them because they are irrelevant. Okay, So we're going to use a pivot table, which is a really handy tool. And a pivot table needs to have three columns of data. So the way I'm going to handle this is I'm going to make a column called indicator. And I'm going to fill that with a number one. You'll understand why in the next step. I'm going to fill that number down for every piece of data. So adjacent to every piece of data in these two, there's a number one. To run my pivot table, I just need to highlight these. And then data, right here's pivot table. When I click this, a pivot table will be created on a separate sheet or a separate tab. And you'll see, there it is. Um, now that pivot table is on sheet one. 
unfortunately, I need customer IDs down the column and I need product names across the top. The good news is it's real easy to do. So I'm going to use the pivot table builder. I'm going to uncheck customer code. I'm going to uncheck product and I'm going to put click hold drag. I'm going to put customer code as a row label which gives me one of every customer code, all the unique ones. I'm going to put product as a column heading. Okay. And then I'm going to take indicator and click hold and drag it into values. And it's going to give me the count of every time that number one appeared. So what the resulting data looks like is this customer purchased blades twice, cologne once, cream never, razors once. And a pivot table will also tell you how many blanks were in your data. Um, and because every single record had that number one, there were no blanks. And also, it's going to give me a total of both columns and rows. So at the very bottom, oops, there's going to be a total and blanks. A pivot table can't be manipulated in terms of sorting or moving things around. Everything is managed off of this. But I really need to sort it to do my market basket analysis. And the way I'm going to handle that is I'm just going to copy the data I want, which is going to be everything to razors, so E. I'm going to copy this, shift click, and then I can't do a right click copy because it's in a pivot table, so I'm going to control C to copy, open a new sheet, and control V to paste. So I've got the data I want. And then as a matter of housekeeping, because I am kind of maniacal about labels and making sure my data is uh, easy to figure out, I'm going to change this to be pivot, because that's where my pivot table is. I'm going to change this tab to be, um, this is going to ultimately be the targets we want to hit. Oops. I used to have a team that went crazy when I did this because they said there's only three tabs, but I said to them, wait till we do real advanced stuff and there'll be 10 tabs and you're going to want to know what the tabs are. So um, because we're interested in blades and razors, I'm going to delete these. And then I'm going to do a sort that's going to make finding what I want real easy. Sort. And I'm going to sort first by blades. I'm going to sort then by razors. I'm going to hit OK. And now I have everything I need to figure out who's who here. So all of these customers have purchased razors, some more than once, and have also purchased blades. I want to suppress them. I want them out of this list. I do not want to market to them. These customers um, have purchased blades, but never razors. So maybe they were given a gift set. Um, the other thing I want to do real quick is freeze my pane so when I scroll, my column headings stay. All right. So these guys bought replacement blades. These guys have bought razors and two sets of blades. But these folks, right here, they have purchased one or more razors and have never purchased a set of replacement blades. Those are the people I want to extend a discount to. Um, and what I'm going to do is just delete everybody that I don't want. Delete here. 
these are folks that probably just bought my gift set. And I'm going to delete you. So these are their customers. Granted, there's not that many because it's it's an example set of data. There's only 18. I've done this where the result was 18,000. I've done this where the result was 180,000. So what I know about these customer IDs is they have purchased razors and they've never bought my blades. Um, so I have no problem giving these folks a discount off of blades because any money I get from them is money that I probably would not have otherwise gotten, right? They're buying their blades from somebody else or maybe their razors in their drawer and they forgot about it. But if I give them an offer on blades, I'll make some money off of them and maybe get them to buy blades again and again and again. Contrarily, the other set of folks, they were already buying blades from me and I don't want to give them a discount. And oftentimes, people are a little flippant about giving a discount to someone. But remember that discount dollars come right off of your profit. Your cost of goods is always the same. So anytime you discount, it collapses your profit and it collapses your margin. So don't leave money on the table. Offer people an incentive to do something they wouldn't otherwise do and try to reduce the likelihood that you're giving away money.